Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. It is a pleasure to be with you. This show has been on air and on podcast for over 12 years. It is a finalist in the People's Choice Podcast Awards. And super grateful to all of you who write in, who connect, who let me know how you're enjoying the show, thoughts you have, the guests, and so forth. It means a lot. If you'd like to subscribe, I urge you to do so because it's so easy. All the new shows come in right to your inbox, and you get to click on it and listen at your leisure. Also, please leave us a five-star review because it helps people who like this conversation and it is the number one transformation conversation to find the show and know that it exists. And I'm going to be delivering an amazing guest today. Super excited. Finally, she's here. I've known her for a couple of years and uh, I'm amazed she hasn't been on before, but you know, timing is always perfect. So a little bit later, Neva, my friend, who is a nine-year-old whiz kid, is going to be here, Neva Lee Rekla, and she's going to be talking about her expertise on how to raise your young entrepreneur. You might have one in your household. I think um, our children today are definitely the big leaders of tomorrow, so it's so important we show up for them. Also, if you are ready to be interviewed yourself, on radio and podcast. If you're ready to take your business big, please know that an arm, a branch of the tree of your business must be how to be interviewed because PR is free. And if you know how to be interviewed, if you know how to get results and knock it out of the ballpark, you know the entire system A to Z, you can do the work on your own. You don't even have to hire a publicist unless you have the money to do so. But it is an amazing way to build your business, to sell your books, to fill your workshops, to have your clients know who you are, to have your community find you. Because every time you're interviewed, you're meeting 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 new people all at once from our well-nurtured audience. So if you're ready, I'm ready to teach you. My live class is rolling out again. I've got a special price right now only. The price will change. So go to debbyd.net slash visibility, D-E-B-B-I-D dot net slash visibility, and join in there. You're also, when you register, going to get a free one-hour strategy session with me, $500 value. So lots of goodies there. And there's also a video of content that I created for you on how to be interviewed that I'm giving away for free, debbyd.net slash visibility. Love to have you join me if you are ready to learn exactly how to be interviewed, how to get results, where the shows are, and how to be the best guest. I'm ready to teach you, debbyd.net slash visibility. I want to talk a little bit here at the beginning about how to expand your vision because a lot of the conversation we're having today, I'm having with my friends and so forth is really about having a vision of unbounded power of consciousness, the kind of consciousness that actually uplifts others. It uplifts us, it heals, it supports us and the world as a whole, which is so important right now. Because when we begin to live from a space of awareness, an awareness that is without boundaries in time and space, we see how we can transform our outer reality as we transform our inner reality. Because in truth, it is actually one reality, both inner and outer are one. It is wholeness, right? So I offer you this thought for today, which is I live in wholeness every minute of every day. It was Mata Amritan Ananda Mai who said, if we dive deep enough into ourselves, we will find the one thread of universal love that ties all beings together. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane Heer, H-E-E-R.com and Access Consciousness. Dot com. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. They've been a friend to this show for many, many years. So if you're ready to change your life quickly, go to one of their classes, or if you'd like to become a facilitator, they're everywhere in the world. It's Dr. Dane here, D-A-I-N-H-E-E-R.com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. Their classes are stupendous. So my question to you is, What are you going to celebrate today? And who do you know who is a youth that you look at and celebrate or want to see celebrated? How are you going to support our youth today? I've got an expert here who can tell you how. It is Neva Lee Reckless. She's an entrepreneur, 
nine-year-old entrepreneur, author, speaker, and inspiration. And Miva is on a mission to inspire 1 million kids to do business and encourage adults to support them. She says that even if kids don't want to do business, if they know they can, they'll believe they can do anything. Neva Lee Rekla is an expert on kid clarity, intuitive oracle card reader, and she's also the host of the Superpower Kids Show. I was just interviewed on her program, so you want to go there and hear that interview as well. And I welcome Neva Lee Rekla to the show. So great to have you here, my dear. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm very excited. Yeah, there's so much we were talking about before on your show. So I'm mm-hmm. going to weave a little bit because we were on a roll with some of that conversation about creating dreams, about what, how to know when things belong to you and don't belong to you, about some of the dreams you're creating. So let's start just so people get to know you, Neva. What is the work that you do out in the world? How do you see yourself out in the world as a business? Do I say businesswoman? Business, how do, business human, business <laughs> people, being? That's a really good question. So if you don't mind, I can share a little bit of my backstory. Please, yeah. So I started business at two, wanting business cards. And I asked my parents if I could have business cards because I saw that they had them. And at the time, I kind of just assumed, oh, they, they're these really cool little like things that people get to hand around, I want them. And the original answer was no, but then they said yes. And so I had my own business cards out too, but then we realized I don't really have a business. I'm just handing out my card with my name and face on it. And so a friend of ours at the time gave me a bag of Italian glass bracelets that I could sell for $10. And I started this at the business conference that we go to that is called CEO Space. And I've been doing business ever since that. And I've run and I've ran multiple different businesses. And then now I am a podcaster and an author. And my book reached an Amazon bestseller three hours after it being out. And so I would say, hmm, maybe I'm an inspirational young leader. That's how I look at myself. I like that because there's a lot of room there. And you said you've run many businesses since you got your business card at two. What kind of businesses? So the how did the bracelets do, by the way? The Italian They did bracelets. well. Yeah? They did well. I have three that I wanted to keep to myself mm-hmm. and they're, they're in my room and those are my little trinkets. Um, I did a... Have you heard of what are they called? They're like stick on nails. I, my sister and I, yeah, they're Jamberry. My sister and I did them, and her name is Danica. My name is Neva, so we called them Diva Jams because that's our name mix. <laughs> and so we did Jamberry for a while, and that worked out really well. We love doing that. And then I did, I started my veteran, my be- veteran business where I, draw pictures and write poems for wounded warriors and vets. Hmm. And I started that because the business conference that we go to does a veterans recognition. And so my parents are both, and we're both in the military. And I, one day I realized I want to do something to give back because they've done so much for me and so much that I could be here. And So I started writing poems and drawing pictures for them, and I still do that. And then I did promotional videos for people's businesses, and then I started my podcast a little bit before that. And I've been doing my podcast, Stupid Power Kids, for three years. I started when I was seven, and now I'm 10, so that's been going really exciting. Yeah. I was actually there when you were announcing your birthday. So mm-hmm. I think I must have missed the number. I'm making you younger than you are. You make me younger than I am any time. Okay? <laughs> Just so <we're> clear. <laughs> so 10, this is amazing. 
I just want people to know, so your book is called When Pigs Can Fly? When Pigs Fly. When Pigs Fly. And where can people get it and what is the book about? So the book is about, it is a guide for parents on how to inspire kids to do business. And it basically shows them that, like you kind of said, that even if kids don't want to do business, it shows them that it is possible. Mm -hmm. And teaching parents how to believe in their kids if maybe they weren't believed in as a kid. And even if you're not a parent, showing that like kids are can be equal and also not just kids like you can do it too and showing I have little areas in the book for kids that are maybe a little bit younger and they want to go to business conferences Mm. showing them here are a few steps if you want to learn how and so I do that and it's a great book that parents can read with their kids or can read alone And then you can go to my website, superpowerkids.com, and it will teach you all about me, and it will teach you all about my book as well. And superpowerkids.com, is that also where your podcast is? Mm -hmm. Everything about me and my business. Beautiful. Okay, so simple. Love it. So I want to jump into it, Neva. What are some tools that we parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, brothers, older brothers, sisters, or maybe even teachers out there, other inspirational leaders, what kind of tools can we use that will help raise a young entrepreneur such as yourself? Oh, that's a good question. The first thing I would say is believe in them because it's pretty challenging to do something in the world that especially as a young entrepreneur, when somebody doesn't believe in you, because it makes it harder to believe in ourselves. And so like sometimes we notice someone tells us we can't do something, it makes us feel upset. And then we feel like we can't do it. So belief is the first thing. I would also say encouragement. And that kind of goes with belief. I would, and like making showing them that there is a new way of doing things and that they can do it. And I would say that is really important. And then including them because sometimes if like you can talk about it, but then if you don't really live it and you don't really show them that it's possible, it's just a conversation. And like we were talking about on my podcast, take the steps towards your dream and sometimes as a kid we don't really know how because we're still new to the world and we're still experiencing new things so the idea of taking a step towards our dreams and be a little bit scary and it's still scary for some adults and so if we show the kids that oh look you can go to this business conference or come to this business meeting with me or maybe even playing out with them, like what you can do to like become an entrepreneur and something like a cute little exercise. If you you took a piece of paper and you wrote out like a business card idea for them and have them draw on it and make it into a business card, Mm -hmm. that, that type of thing. And something I do is if I see kids, I hand out these little business cards that say, my big idea is, mm. and my name is, and you can reach me here, because it's really cool being able to be like, oh, look, here's where you can find out what I do, and here's how you can support me, and here's how I can support you. That is really cool. And so those simple things, and also but like believing in yourself, because if you don't believe in yourself, but you encourage others, it it's a little bit challenging to believe in others. So find the courage in yourself first and then show them the way. Because having someone show you the way and knowing, oh, look, they believe that they can do it. They're doing it. They're living their dream, their dream and their path. That's really cool to see as a kid. Yeah. So those little things. As an adult too, by the way, it's, it's still, trust me, it's going to be just as awesome when you get older. Um, and I love all of this because I, I think we all need people 
to look to, to be inspiring. You know, when some of my mm-hmm. clients come to me and, and talk to me about becoming an international best-selling author, I say to them, you know, part of the process you're embarking on, this really is about you. It is about your dream to reach that. But what I want you to know is the influence you're going to have out people you know and don't know who will see you had a dream and you made it come true and how big that dream is. It's so important. We all need that inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. We need that, that yes, these things can still happen. So I just want to reiterate, you said the components are to believe, believe in ourselves first, and that the adults believe in us, that we are encouraged by whomever is helping us out with the dream. We are also going to uh, find new ways to do things. I love that. Contrary action can be powerful, new avenues, new paths. Mm-hmm. Also to be inclusive. There have the, the parents or the adults help us by being inclusive and also to model for us what that looks like. Know that we take steps, as they say, like in the law of attraction, the word action is in there. So you do mm-hmm. have to take action. Uh, business cards, that was phenomenal. I really liked that, that we could have the adult write a business card and then we, I'm including myself like you, I'm years old, I'm going to draw on my own card. I love that idea. How, what a great, unique card that <laughs> And or to write, my big idea is. And these Mm -hmm. are tremendous. So when we have adults, we have people we look up to who are modeling, who are encouraging and believing in us. What happens to the adult? What changes for us? What changes for our environment when we choose to support you and our children? I would say, like we talked about this on my show, like, you're able to look back and go, oh, I was able to help the start of an inspirational young leader. Mm -hmm. Or also kind of, I find that something I do, and I'm still technically a kid, when I look at younger kids and I'm able to see how fearless they are, it kind of makes me learn something. It helps me learn a new way of living. Mm -hmm. And I imagine the same thing could be true with adults, that if you look back and go, oh, I helped my kid do this, you get to learn so much more. And so, like, my nephew, he's he's three, and he is so cute, and he's very energetic, but just being able to see the world through his eyes and being able to be like, oh, I helped him learn this, or he's learning this new thing because of school, or he's experiencing this it helps me learn something. And it's very powerful to be able to look back and go, I helped them do this, or they're doing this and they are inspiring others, Mm. things like that. And like I said, you can learn a lot from them. Yeah. Yeah. So with all of this, these are some ways to encourage a dream. I wanna talk now a little more specifically about a business model. So you've actually created businesses. I know your parents have very successfully created businesses. So this is a a beautiful, talk about being modeled. This is a beautiful way to model something out in the world. How would you recommend if there's some kid, if there's a child, a young adult listening, and they're like, I have a dream, but I want to create a business, but I don't really know how. Are there really specific ways, Neva, that we can Mm -hmm. turn our dream as children into a reality? Ooh, that's a really good question. I would say, look at what you like doing first. Like, think about the smallest things you like doing. It could be playing with your toys, or it could be going out and meeting with friends. Think about that, or think about times you've helped others, or think about times someone else has helped you. Think about the smaller things first, and then build them up on each other. So think about a time, let's say, let's play this out. So let's say you saw someone fall off their bike and their knee got hurt. So you go and help them. And then you trip and fall. And then another person comes and helps you. It, you notice that there's signs of like, oh, everybody's helping each other. So maybe it could turn into you start helping people. And 
like even that, like helping others. And soon it could turn into people hire you to go and help them out with maybe, let's say, like, I can't think of an example, like maybe putting up their groceries. And then you start helping people and they start hiring you to do that. That's a business. And, or some kids do lemonade stands. You could turn in, you could start a lemonade area. Like you could create your own little building and it could be this cool little thing. So things like that. Start with the things that you like and you know are small. Because sometimes we work up smaller things that get us, get us outside of our comfort zones. Because I would say like starting small and then taking baby steps towards something huge mm. is really cool because then that makes this huge thing even better because you get to look back and go, all these little steps I made to this point were worth it. And maybe something huge you think is huge now is something very small compared to what you're going to do in the next two years. So take baby steps towards what you like doing and maybe gather a group of friends who likes doing the same thing and start working on that. And you can start creating businesses out of in very small areas and you can start making your dreams become a reality. And it doesn't even have to be a business, but just looking at the things you like, I think. So what about you then, Neva? What do you like? What are the things that really float your boat, rock your world? I have a feeling animals is one of them, just because we mm -hmm. talked about that quite a bit. But I, I am curious, what is like at your core, what are your values of the things that make you feel like you're lit up? I would say one, doing interviews, because this is a lot of fun. Um, spending time with family, hmm. I would say, because like no matter what family is family. And so those small things, like I love hanging out with my brother and I love hanging out with my sister those things make me happy and hanging out with my mom and dad going out with them or spending time with my friends I do worship at our church and so I sing and dance around for little kids and I volunteer there as well so I like helping others and like you said, animals, like anything I can do to help animals. Um, I really like doing that because it just lights me up. And then just being a kid, I would say, are the main things. You you made mention, I, I don't remember, you know, so everybody's just going to have to listen to both interviews because now it's it's becoming this melting pot for me. But I know that you do 30 or 90 second videos to promote someone's business, someone's event, someone's nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Is that a paid gig? Uh, how do they reach out to you? What is it that you provide? So I used to do that. And what happened would people would either send me the products that they wanted me to look at, or they would give me a simple script based off of the things that they wanted me to talk about, or they would give me some key points, and I would go off those key points to talk about how their business helps others and what you can get from it, and just kind of uplifting the person, because I like uplifting people. And this is uh, something people hire you for? Is that correct? Yeah, they hired me. And again, it's on your... Le Neva yeah. Lee Reckla is also, if that's easier, because you see her name there, you can go to ne Neva Lee Reckla com, and that'll send you right over to Superpower Kids as well. Mm -hmm. All connected. Yeah. Beautiful. So folks who are listening, this is Dare to Dream and Debbie Dashinger. I'm interviewing the amazing 10-year-old Neva Lee Reckla, and you can go to her website, samename.com. And if you would like to contribute to the show and support Dare to Dream, go to patreon.com slash dare to dream for a dollar or more. You can contribute and help sustain this show. It takes a lot to run it. 
and we're always grateful for your donations, tax deductible, I might add, because this number one transformation conversation is all about you. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? And what would you create out in the world? How big and bold and free would you live? I'm here to help you create that out into the world. Go to patreon.com slash dare to dream, become part of the team so I can continue even after 12 years and all the amazing master conversations that I offer for free. This is ways to introduce you better and better, easier and easier so you can live the life you really prefer and create your big big kahuna dreams. <laughs> so this is Debbie Dashinger. This is Dare to Dream podcast. I'm interviewing ne Neva Lee Rekla. What a name. It's so Southern. I'm going to ask you about that. So she's been doing business since she was two. Go to her name, N-E-V-A-L-E-E-R-E-C-L-A.com. Why did they name you this Neva Lee Rekla? Was there, is there a reason behind it? Is there an energy behind it? So my mom on the mom on my mom's side of the family, her her mom or my grandma's name is Nancy. Mm -hmm. And then my great grandma's name was Reva. And then my great grandma's mom was named Eva. So I have that and then that is everyone how my name is made, my first name, and then my middle name is Lee and I think that is because my on my dad's side of the family my great grandma's middle name is Lee. Oh, that's beautiful. They gave you a yeah. little bit of everybody in your lineage to yeah. empower you to go forth in the world. And I love that you bring up your family. I just want to address that cuz I know your mom and dad, Tanya and mm -hmm. Justin, and I want to know what is it like to be you, Neva? What is it like to be the offspring, the child mm -hmm. of Justin and Tanya? Ooh. That's a good question. I would say it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so a little bit more of my story. I, uh, when I was like a baby to around two, I was living on a ranch. So we grew our own food. Mm -hmm. We had bunnies and we had chickens and there's, I had a chicken who didn't like me. We had, <laughs> yeah. I was attacked by a rooster, <laughs> and so I grew. We grew up there for a little bit, and then um, we moved to Colorado for a little bit. And so it's been a lot of fun. Like we like traveling, and then family is very important to us. So I love, like I said, I love spending time with my siblings, and I love hanging out with like my sister and her boyfriend. So there's a lot of fun things that we like doing as a family. And that's really important to us where we call ourselves the 24 seven family because like we're doing things with each other and that's really important to us. So what I know about your parents, besides being unbelievable human beings, <laughs> incredibly wise and connected in deep ways, they're so smart. Oh my God, mm -hmm. your mom and dad, woof, off the charts. Uh, mm -hmm. What's that like? Uh, even conversations with them, the amount of information and data that they understand at a deep mm -hmm. level and can retain. It's, it's a lot of fun because like, even if I don't understand what they're talking about, and sometimes I do, sometimes I really understand it, but even if I don't, I see the power mm -hmm. in it and I see oh, look, they're doing something to make a difference. And so my mom is the one who started Superpower Experts, which is where my, um, my podcast is run. And I know that that's making an impact. We have a million downloads a month and we have a bunch of amazing shows on there and it, they've taught me to make an impact, but do it in a way that I know the, being my authentic self and do it in a way that I know I can look back and go, I did that. And knowing that it will make an impact on people and it will make an impact on myself and it will help me grow and help others grow. Mm. So it's really powerful and yet really fun at the same time. 
So I want to talk about Burning Man. I need to go there. <laughs> so, you know, I'm a little jealous, but I may have to talk to your mom about joining you at some point. I haven't been yet. And I have a lot of curiosity and a lot of mm. intrigue. So tell me, how many times have you been to Burning Man with your family? What was it like? And I, and I, we'll start there because I, I have a couple of questions around this for you. So this year was my third year mm. in a row. We, it's a lot of fun, I would say. Um, it's really dusty. Yeah, okay, good. Give me a description, because that's what I picture, like a dust bowl, it's dirty, where do you shower? How do you so get grass? So our do you camp, the dirt? so our camp is Buddha camp, and Buddha camp. So <laughs> we, we had a shower, but some camps did not. So we had these amazing people, and I'm very grateful for them because mm -hmm. I could not imagine not showering for two weeks. <laughs> totally. Two um, but we had a heated shower, mm -hmm. and that, when you are in born, at Burning Man, a heated shower is, who is amazing. And mm -hmm. so we had people make the shower, and some, something Buddha Camp does is we do espressos. And that's our little gift to the playa. Yeah. And then there we have a bunch of fun. And then we had these like assigned jobs. So people would cook. So my parents and I were on breakfast duty. And then I believe it was Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, I think. I did oracle readings. Yeah, tell me about <laughs> that. So these so, these oracle readings are a gift that you give to your fellow burners. Mm -hmm. All right. And something about Burning Man is you don't expect a gift in return, mm. and that's a huge thing there. You don't give to people to expect them to give you something back. You don't pay for things on the playa except for ice and coffee, <laughs> because they had this like. I think it was called Center Camp. Yeah, Center Camp. And they had like these things that are electrolyte tabs and stuff that people paid for because Burning Man supplied them. And ice is a really important thing. So we paid for them. And then we would go to Center Camp and stuff. And then my oracle readings I would do, I would do for people during breakfast. And so people would come over into our camp and they would come and I would do my oracle reading and stuff. And then they would stay and get a cappuccino. We also did pancake breakfast, which was a lot of fun one day. And so it was just like this fun experience. We're really good friends with our camp leader. Um, and we were like this community. And so we're going back there next year. And it's just like this cute little com community. And it's a lot of fun. We all go to the man burning together. And that, that's our thing. We will all walk there. And we, that was a lot of fun. And everyone had their own little areas. And we had our own little camp area. Now, can you hear other people? So if you're in your little space or tent or whatever, can you hear, let's say people, you want to go to bed at 10. But your neighbor in your little Buddha camp says, no, man, I'm staying up till 2 a.m. Do they disturb you? Do they wake you up? Or no, everybody's very considerate and they take it outside. Everybody is considerate, yes. So how it worked is it's a clock. So there, we were at 5 o'clock in Echo, and that was our thing. And then there was like a 10 o'clock and Alpha. And so it worked like a clock and an alphabet pretty much. And so we were at five o'clock in Echo and we pretty much made this kind of commitment in the camp that you go to bed whenever you want. You can stay up all day, do whatever, but be considerate. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't have a certain bedtime. We didn't have those rules, but we made a commitment that we would be considerate because our tents so this is like, let's say this is our camp. We had all of our tents in one area in the back. Mm. So everybody's tents are next to each other and there's only a little bit of walking space. And that's, a, and that's fine with all of us, but we have to be considerate. 
So we talked about that. And yeah. So So Eva, what haven't you done? You said you're going next year. You're in already. And we're not even near it. You're just sort of finishing (laughs) this year's experience. But you say you're back at Burning Man for show up. So what have you not yet done at Burning Man that you want to incorporate the next time you go? Like everything. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Like you don't get to experience everything. And so that's the thing. Like you can go for two weeks, but then you only get to experience a little bit of it. Yeah. And so I'll say that there's a lot because it all changes. Um, Something that I did with all of my, like I g- gather a group of people and we would go to this place called Camp Corny. And this place had stuffed animals and they would do this party that you can go and you get a certain amount of time to jump in this inflatable pool of stuffed animals and pick <laughs> one stuffed animal. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah. And then sometimes, I, I haven't done this yet because I'm not doing this, but they have this little surgery area. And so they cut a hole into your stuffed animal and then you tape them on and do a stick. I did not do that. No. I don't want that. No. But I would take a group of friends and we would all go to Camp Corny and we'd get our spirit animals uh-huh. and it would be a lot of fun. So, yeah, things okay. like that. And then we had a banana camp next to us, but, and they had a giant hammock and they had a bunch of banana hammocks. They called themselves orange camp though. <laughs> and that, that was, there was that, that was their thing. So they, they were orange. You glad we didn't say banana again. Oh, and, I know that knock, knock joke. I am not um, kidding. That's hilarious. And that was their thing. And there was a huge hammock, huge, and it held quite a few people. And people would be a little bit crazy and people would fall off. And one time, my friend and one of our other friends who's an adult, we went there and the guy started pushing the hammock way too much. And the adult friend grabs me. and We almost fall off the hammock. It was a lot of fun. Okay. (laughs) And so they had the banana hammock. And then next to us, there was this snow cone camp. So they did snow cones and that was their gift Mm. and we would go out on the playa and had a lot of fun there was this like boutique and they had a bunch of clothes and like fanny packs glasses hats and all that that you could take whatever you wanted you could take Mm. and people would go and then they had like chicken and waffles so they would do like chicken nuggets and waffles and that was their little thing and so that things like that and just like the most random things that make your day or we went out with some of our friends and we went and we saw a crocodile that was made out of these handmade tiles Mm -hmm. and there was a bunch of them it was I believe it was like one like 18,000 pounds or something and if you can see it's handmade because you can see like the little imprints and stuff. And so that was the little crocodile. And my friend and I climbed on it and we went inside its mouth and we went under it and we got to see like what it was made of and stuff. So things like that, that are really cool. Beautiful. So I understand that while you're there, Neva, you deliver over 200 of these intuitive oracle readings to people. That's extraordinary. That's what I do, yeah. Yeah, so people in attendance are really receiving something yummy from you. And I understand by virtue of you doing that, that Kid Clarity was born. And just so people know, it's spelled K-I-D, K. L-A-R-I-T-Y, Kid Clarity. Tell us about Kid Clarity, and can people get readings from you even if they're not at Burning Man? Ooh. Can you say that last part again? Because my ears are fell out. Yeah, yeah. So uh, tell us about Kid Clarity, and also can people receive a reading from you, an oracle reading, even if they're not at Burning Man? What if they want to get a hold of you and Ooh. they want a Neva intuitive reading? So, yes, you can. If you go to, again, my website, you can look up my name, nivaliereckla.com, and that will take you to all of my things. You can get a reading from me, and that is a lot of fun. I love doing it with people. So what happens is pretty much we 
talk and I have my decks that we can choose from and we talk for a little bit about kind of life and all that and then we'll pull cards and we'll talk about the meaning of them and see how it ties into what you wanted it to tie into and all that and it's just this yummy energy that we get to be in and it's a lot of fun and I made a good friend at Burning Man because I did a reading for her we're connected on Instagram now and so like connections happen through those small things and it's thanks to Burning Man that I even started Kid Clarity and so yeah so yeah Awesome. I'll have to do that with you sometime. Well, yeah. folks, this is Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. If you're tuning in, if you want to be interviewed on radio and podcast in 60 days or less, but you don't know how, you don't have publicity knowledge, you don't even know where the shows are, I've got you. Join my class at debbyd.net slash visibility. It is going to be a live class with me. I've taught it before. And every time my amazing students participants leave and they soar. Uh, some of them have parlayed their interviews into speaking on stage, into their own shows, into uh, magazines. And I've got someone actually right now that I privately coached who is having a really big channel like a Netflix develop a reality show for her. And this is somebody who went from having severe issues to being visible and speaking out loud and being interviewed to having like so much confidence and fun around it. So you can have that and be that too. If you're ready to rock and roll, I'm ready to teach you and get you out there quickly and easily. Go to debbyd.net slash visibility. And uh, let's see, we're coming towards the end here, Neva. So much, so much I want to, sh I want to share about you because I, you know, I think you're the greatest thing in the world. Um, mm -hmm. Folks who are interested, go to her website, Neva, N-E-V-A, Lee, L-E-E, -E, Rekla, R-E-C-L-A. It'll pop you right into the superpower kids. This is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Mm -hmm. Oh, is that a question? <laughs> a question for you. <laughs> so my dreams and goals are, like you said, to encourage one million kids to do business. And that is my main goal right now. And I want to show kids that it is possible to do these amazing things. And I want to do that. I would like to write another book for kids on business and how they can do that and that's a little bit in the future I think and I want to do more speaking mm -hmm. um I want to get on more stages to share my message um I would I love doing like Facebook lives with people and talking with people about business and talking about business for kids and all that and then as for right now those are my dreams how can we, we have just a few minutes, but so much, how can we understand what our superpower is? How would we even Ooh. go about understanding this is my gift out to the world? Like this was just given to me in order to shine out there. And even for people who thought it was something that was weird about them or different, or it turns out to actually be unique and powerful. How do we know? So one way is if you go to superpowerexperts.com, you can take the superpower quiz. So we'll ask you a couple of questions and then you get to find out what your superpowers are. But then another way is look at what you do in the world and look at how you connect with people. One of my superpowers is chameleon ability. And so I can change my energy and shift it into certain ways depending on the people that I'm connecting with. So things like that and looking into who you are, asking yourself questions. Like if you take a notebook and just write down a bunch of questions for yourself, answering one each and every day, then think about it and think about what your superpowers are based on those questions and things like that. And maybe ask people what you think, what they think that you may have. And sometimes it's really hard to de decide what you think your superpowers are. So if you ask people like, what am I good at? or things like that, or maybe what would you say I'm most unique? What is most unique about me? Things like that can get, like, 
that creative juice flowing and it can get you answering that question for yourself and it can get you answering that question for others. Is there anything you want to say here at the end? Hmm. I would say, like I said before, encourage your kids that they can do something big. And even if it's not business, show them that there is a new inspiring way of living and believe in yourself. And even if you're not a parent, kids will, it's so inspiring to see people who believe in themselves and they can say, you know what, that judgment that those people are saying doesn't matter. I love me. And I believe that I can do this and my message is important to the world Mm. and it is important to you. And it is important. Like even to me seeing that other people do what they say that they're here to do Mm -hmm. and following that guidance. Holy, it is amazing to watch. (laughs) So I would say just be yourself, believe in yourself and believe in others Mm -hmm. because seeing someone believe in us is a huge gift even if they don't know you just like believing in others and showing them that there's a possible way of living that is just having fun and I call it like living like a kid like not caring what anybody else thinks believing in others and having fun while doing it because that is really powerful well I love you Neva and I believe in you, and I know you got this. I know you can do this, and I know you're going to keep shining your light and your brilliance as such a gorgeous, inspirational leader example out in the world. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you so, so much, Debbie. It was a lot of fun. It was a pleasure, as always, my friend. And I end today's show with this quote from Stephanie Tolan. It's a tough time to raise, teach, or be a highly gifted child. Schools are to extraordinarily intelligent children what zoos are to cheetahs. Every organism has an internal drive to fulfill its biological design. The same is true for unusually bright children. From time to time, the bars need to be removed. The enclosures broadened. Zoo chow, easy and cheap as it is, must give way at least some of the time to lively, challenging mental prey. Mm. Tune in next week on the interview on Dare to Dream. My guest is Sage Kingsley Goddard. She was voted the number one law of attraction teacher and awakened souls to experience total soul liberation and joy by connecting with the divine to prosper, thrive, and shine. Again, subscribe to Dare to Dream podcast so you can hear every new show that comes out in this number one transformation conversation. And if you're listening to the podcast, but you love to see what I look like, what my guests look like, our interaction and animation together. I've had people do that and come back and say, you know what, you are right. This actually is an amazing way to watch the show. It just gives you a total 3D holistic experience. Go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And remember that the secret of success is beginning to fulfill your dream in the first place. Take action. We're all waiting for you.